From Florida's Space Coast, this is your career. Welcome to Your Career. I'm Debbie Featherston, your host, and with me today is Donna Anselmo. Donna is president of Bold Marketing Solutions. Solutions. And Donna, thank you so much for being with me today. You're here because you have written not one book, but nearly two have been published, haven't they? Yes, actually, I have one that was traditionally published, which is Marketing Demystified, a self-teaching guide, 380 pages of marketing information. And then we'll talk in the program, I think, about different ways that you can get published. One of the other books that I am actually published in was done as a collaborative project with other writers. Wonderful. And that was Mar um, Media Magic. And then I have a new book coming out, Be Bold, She Said. Perfect. Well, excellent. And the topic, the whole focus of this program is how do you really leverage book publishing to advance your career? Well, there are a number of strategies, but one of the reasons I guess I should tell you about why I went ahead and wrote a book, I'd because love to that hear. kind of ties into it all. Long story is that my dad always told me I should be a writer. That was how he saw me, and I thought it was a great way to honor him. Another reason is that I moved to a new area. I moved from Long Island, New York to Melbourne, Florida, and when I got here, I realized I knew one person, and I said, how am I going to get my business going and how am I going to get people to know me and recognize me as an expert in my field if nobody here has ever heard my name. So when thinking about it, there were a few things I did and the first thing I did was I reached out to an agent and I said, I know enough that I should be able to write a book. So I was able to get an agent who helped me do that. Once I had the book, I was actually able to parlay that into a radio show because I could take the book contract and say, okay, now I have a credential. So mm. one of the reasons that I wrote the book was to build my credentials as an expert. And then another reason is that I did have information to share, and I think that most people who write a book are writing because they have something heartfelt that they want other people to know. For me, being in a continuous learning environment is very stimulating, mm -hmm. and I think if I feel that way, so do other people, so to help them with continuous learning by writing a business book, Perfect. Um, I thought was... Well, how did you actually come into the world of marketing? Let's just back up a step and take a look at that. Sure. Um, way back in the 1980s, my husband bought me a book for my birthday, and it was written by, I think, Albert Zinzer, and it was called How to Get Happily Published. And he bought it for me because from the time I was a child, I liked writing. And I was writing children's stories for my children and using them as bedtime stories. So he bought me this nice book. And in the book, it talked about a catch-22 for people who want to be published. And the catch is, if you've never been published, nobody wants to publish you. You're unknown. So they don't want to take a risk on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So in the book, one of the pieces of advice was, if you want to be published, make affiliations with other writers. And so I started asking around, and I found someone from my daughter's school who had written a column for a newspaper, and I asked mm -hmm. her how she did that. It was a teacher. And so she told me, and she gave me the name of a newspaper editor. So I went and saw the newspaper editor, brought college term papers with me because I had no experience in right. journalism, but it was a way for me to get a foot in the door by writing for a local company. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I did that. I went from freelance reporter to full-time reporter to managing editor over the years. And then once I became a managing editor, the New York Times took note because I had won a few awards and so did my newspaper. And through that, I was able to um, start writing for the New York Times. And once I did that, Stony Brook University offered me a job in their public relations department. So I went from wanting to be a journalist into public relations, which launched me into marketing and public affairs. Ah, what a wonderful world. Uh, it was interesting. <laughs> Very um, synergistic, you know, mm -hmm. and, and serendipitous. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I absolutely love is learning about the journey that other people's careers have taken. Mm -hmm. And yours couldn't have had a more nice progression, progression to lead you to where you are today. None of it was really planned. It was just being able to like look at opportunities and kind of see what excited me in the moment. Um, when when I, I knew I wanted to do writing, but I didn't know what form it would take. I went to college and was a psychology major and a double major in history. 
But then when I decided that writing was really where I wanted to be, it was finding the right steps to take. And then from that, just kind of following the path. Well, what does it really take to find a publisher? You elaborate a little bit that the first thing was that you started with networking to identify how to get visible and get started. But when sure. you're really ready to publish that book, you know, what does it take to get a publisher? Well, you said a key word, and that's networking. I didn't have the first idea how to get published. I knew that there were books out there. There are books on the market called mm -hmm. The Writer's Market, for instance, right. and there are lists of literary agents, and you can Google online and find agents. And of course, you want to look for an agent that's interested in publishing your genre. So before I decided to write on marketing, I had an idea to write a book on business proposals because I was a business and marketing mm -hmm. consultant. And many companies need to learn how to write a good proposal so that they can sell their products. In my case, learning how to write a good proposal on the business end ended up helping me to sell my book to an agent and then help the agent sell the book to the publisher. It's really important to be able to make that connection. And what I did from a networking standpoint was I called someone I knew who already was published, and that was the vice president of the university, Stony Brook University, at which I worked. And I told her I had an idea, and I asked her, you know, how do you go about finding an agent? She blessed me by saying, let me introduce you to my agent. I like your Wonderful. idea. And she said, put my name in the subject line of your email to this person. She gave me her email address. And because I used the name of somebody that had a relationship with the agent, I was able to get through the email, you know, thousands of emails that right. she gets. So, Donna, you're really talking about traditional publishing when you're talking about looking for an agent. So tell us, what are some of the different publishing models that you've become aware of? Okay. So traditional publishers, you find an agent. You need an agent because they get so many submissions that most of the big publishers won't take an unsolicited manuscript. But you do have other options. There are so many options now just to self-publish. You can go on Amazon. You can use CreateSpace. You can go to iUniverse. And you can upload your own content and have it turn out as a book. So that's self-publishing where you choose the publisher. You mm -hmm. pay to have mm -hmm. your um, material printed essentially. There's also another model Tendril Press in Colorado uses which is a partnership publishing where you have to understand that the reason that a publisher publishes a book is so they can make money. Of course. And so they want to make sure that you have a plan for publishing and not only for writing the material and submitting it to them but for getting it out to market. With a partnership publishing model the thing that the publisher does is she says or he says or they say I will publish your book I'll take care of getting it in print editing it working the distribution channel for you but I want you to commit to buying so many books and that way it defrays some of the cost and expense for the publisher but what you get as a benefit with that is you get the distribution channel that you otherwise as a novice uh, author would not have mm -hmm. Well, I'm really curious, um, you know, what options uh, do prospective authors have if, let's say, I'm working with an agent and the book doesn't, you know, doesn't get accepted? Do I have to, how long do I have to keep it with the agent? Is there a contract I need to be mindful of? Sure. When you make a contract with the agent, it's based on the fact that the agent actually sells it. What you want to do is build a good rapport with your agent. So if you start taking your book different places and she finds out or he finds out that you're marketing it yourself, then that would probably be a flag to them that you're not going to be such a great client down the line and to work with even with the publisher. So it's about having integrity when you start with the agent. Um, you don't have to have an agent. There are some times when, you know, as I said, you can, t to the smaller publisher, you can reach out directly. But it's only if you really want to go to a top five publishing house that typically it's done through the agent. So what are some pointers that you would give to a person who's really interested in writing, but they need some help with amping up the creative juices? Okay, well, there are a few few things. First of all, the creativity part, I would say, and this is my biggest struggle, is getting enough rest. Because, <laughs> okay, right? You have to sure. sleep because if you don't sleep and you don't dream and you don't get your, your body and your mind into a creative flow, you know, dreaming is a very creative activity. Certainly. And it yeah. opens your mind to the subconscious aspects that when we're conscious, we kind of shut down to. So I always pay a lot of attention to what I dream. And I'm going to tell you this, actually. I went to a 
publishing um, seminar, and it was called How to Buy Books by the Truckload, and it was put on in Philadelphia at the Crown Plaza Hotel, and it was a weekend event. And in the room, there were 83 people who had brought books that they wanted to sell. Now, I was there on behalf of a client who wrote a book, and I was helping her to promote it. So I'm looking around and I'm saying, wow, if 83 people could write a book, I could write a book. You could write a book, Debbie, and so sure. could millions of other people out there who are watching this show who have a great idea. So it's a matter of figuring out how you let go of those barriers. So I went to sleep kind of with this supreme confidence, I guess, that... Um, God was going to give me <laughs> an inspiration and that if all these other people had that inspiration I could tap into it too. The next morning I woke up and I went, I have a book. And here was the catch. A lot of people think that to write a book it has to be a huge project and a tremendous undertaking and so they're scared. They don't have the time. They don't have the knowledge. You can learn on the fly first of all so you can always get the knowledge. You just have to figure out what questions mm -hmm. you need to ask. Mm -hmm. But it's important also to think about the fact that when, um, when you want to write that book and you're looking at what other people did, you can use them as a model. It really should inspire anybody that if, if you have a dream and you have a vision um, and you make some of the right steps, it's really important to plan. Just think through what it is you want to do and start putting it down on paper. Well, I'm curious, you know, you, you, from where we've come with the concept of the ideas and the writing of the book, getting it published, and knowing that there's a lot of options. Mm -hmm. it, it comes right down to the fact, you know, if I choose to write a book, how can I actually market it? What are some marketing tools? Okay. That I'm, or how sure. can I actually use the book as a marketing tool? Let me, that's a different question. So how can I really use the book as the, a marketing tool? Sure, well, the first thing I would think about is using social media. When you have, there are a couple of stages too to writing a book. So you could start putting out the fact that you're writing a book and talking maybe about your topic and positioning yourself as an expert that people want to listen to. Now you may have um, a fantasy story or, or a novel or a romance that you wanna write versus a business type book. But one thing you want to do is you want to bubble up some interest and get some people talking about Definitely. it. Social media is great for that. So if you have some advanced press that you ha are writing a book, then you wrote the book, and then the book is due to come out. So you kind of stage all your messaging on social media. And then finally, when the book comes out, you pick it up, you take a snapshot, <laughs> you put it on social media, and you ask all your friends to go and buy it. And you ask them to, to share it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, using social media as a conduit is one good strategy. Other strategies that are really important are um, making sure that you're a subject matter expert. You know, you know what you're writing about and that you are building, um, using the book to build your credentials. Now to do that, you say so you have the book ready. Well now, here I am talking to you, Debbie, because I made a connection mm -hmm. with you and use the book as a PR tool. So okay, I've got a book that we can talk about. We can talk about marketing and each concept in the book, but then you're gonna talk to different hosts and different radio show hosts or different print media people, and everybody's gonna want a slightly different angle. So it's really important to start thinking about what are the stories that you can tell that relate to the content of your book, and then to look at who's writing about those areas and who's interested in those topics as journalists, and then you make a list. And the best way to find that list is to start reading uh, reading the newspapers and looking at television and see who's talking your talk and who might be interested. And then, of course, you have to go out and you have to promote to those show hosts and get your story out well, there. Well, and I think it's just fabulous because when we're talking about this, it's, you know, the topic is, you know, you're writing a book for the purpose of advancing your career. Absolutely. You know, so it's being very strategic in the beginning, right, in choosing, you know, how do you want to be known? So this can tie back to branding, that personal, yeah, right? and the, the personal brand. I mean, whether you're um, out there because you're running a company or you might be looking to grow your own position inside of a company, and the best way to do that is to get known for, uh, for something special, get known for the way you handle yourself, get known for the content, get known for your integrity. And you can tie all of that to writing a book mm -hmm. and use that in the workplace. Certainly. Yeah, and, and you really know, there's another piece to it too, which is people take note 
when you say you're an author or somebody else introduces you as an author, people love authors. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about why that is. And what occurred to me today as I was driving over to the studio was that it kind of harkens back to just our initial roots, even as cave people, storytellers. Mm -hmm. The storytellers in the medieval times, those were the people that kind of kept us connected and gave us very critical information that we needed for life. So I think that authors are in some ways entertainers, but they're also people who help you think about things in new ways, and that helps to develop us you know, as That's individuals. True. You think about professional development, entertainment, I mean, it, there's a multitude of uh, dimensions. So what do you feel might be the greatest challenge for someone that's thinking about writing a book? I think the biggest challenge is time. Well, you have to have an idea. You have to ha be passionate about something. Um, you have to be able to sit your butt down <laughs> in right? a chair long enough to get the job done. I think time is an issue. I think taking the time also to really make sure that you know your subject matter. To find the people who can help you is another challenge because if you've never done it before, you don't know how to do it. There is such a wealth of information on the internet. You can Google any topic. You can get YouTube. You can, Brian Tracy, who's a management guru, he has a program on nice. you know, how to write a book. Jack Canfield, I think, did a program now on how to write a book. I think Bob Proctor may have one. So there are all um, people that you can Google and you can sign up for their free webinars or you can sign up for their paid programs and you can get that support. If you are getting that support, um, or you're doing it yourself, the one thing I would highly recommend is that you get an editor to help you. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Do not do not believe that that every one of your words is so sacrosanct that it cannot be challenged or changed. Even an editor needs an editor, and I learned that because I was a newspaper editor for uh, five years. And um, we had editors and we had proofreaders. And there's also a difference in the levels of editing. Some et You want a copy editor who can look at your content, and not just check for grammar and spelling, but can look at it and say, you know what, there's a hole here, there's something missing, or maybe this is redundant and we really don't need it. But you need an editor who's gonna take interest in what you have to say and your story and challenge you with questions to make your content better. Mm -hmm. I'm so delighted to hear you say that because that's been my personal experience is that an, a good editor goes well beyond the content to look at the concept, who's your market. I mean, they're really looking at it. And sometimes they've even influenced how the book is, uh, the book title is, is designed. Absolutely. And another thing, when I started out, as I mentioned earlier in the show, that I started out writing children's books, mm -hmm. painting pictures and, you know, doing illustrations. And I someday still hope that I'm going to actually publish those. But one of the things I learned in my trials and tribulations is you don't send the photographs. You want, if you're sending to a publisher, send your content first because the reader of your content may have a totally different picture in their mind mm -hmm. of what the artwork should be. And if you give them a picture and they don't like it, your story could fail on the basis of the wrong art or the wrong title. So just always be open and accepting of the um, perspective of others. And if somebody self-publish, I mean, let's go back to the, the sure. business models for just a moment. You know, if, if I'm going to choose the road of self-publishing, what's the what are some things I need to think about? Is there some additional supports that I may, may need to have uh, in yeah. place that will ensure that the book is well-read, right? That it gets the visibility and traction, that it's, first of all, well-written. Mm -hmm. there, there are a few things I think I would consider um, with self-publishing. Number one... It's good to know that self-publishing, the cachet of it has changed. So many people are doing it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a fast way to get to market. It can be very effective. If you've self-published or you're thinking about self-publishing, there is no shame in self-publishing anymore. Not at all. You know, it used to be like, oh, you don't want to go with the vanity press. But you know what? I would go with the vanity press now. Also, having done this and having seen the differences with doing personal um, independent publishing, you retain a lot more of the money mm -hmm. when you do it yourself. The big challenge you're going to have is that you don't have the distribution 
um, chain established. But there are resources like netgalley.com. Netgalley is a place on the web where reviewers go to read the um, manuscripts and, and the new books that are coming out. And if they like those books, they're buying them for the bookstores. Um, another, another resource would be the book expos that come out usually in the spring. Publishing, um, professional publishing happens in two cycles, twice a year. So the one show comes out, I think, in May, and the other one in September. And, um, and so your books may come onto the shelves July, August, um, mm -hmm. for a cycle. Mm -hmm. And you want, if you're independently publishing, you might not want to come out at the same time all the other big books are being released. Maybe you want to plan to come a month or two later so that you're not competing in the eyes of all those book reviewers for space on the shelves. And, Great advice. And one other thing is you can go to a bookstore and you can bring them your book and say, you know, to the manager at Barnes & Noble or to the small bookseller, can I get my book here? You don't only have to sell by bookstores or online. Mm -hmm. You can try selling to Nordstrom's or to pick a store. Um, Chico's is a woman's store if you're mm -hmm. writing a woman's book. You might be able to say, hey, I have a book for your audience because if they can make a few dollars on it because they're in business and that's sure. what they want to do, but they like your content, they could put it right in their store for you. So you might look at boutique sales as an independent publisher as well. When, when is your new book going to be released? Well, I think it will be this spring. Um, I've been working with the publisher. It's been taking a longer time than I wanted. And of course, because of that, I'm starting to think, you know, maybe I should just pull it back and do it myself. So it's on my agenda to make a decision about. I had hoped to have it out in September, and that moved to January. And now January may move to April. So it's a lesson in flexibility. And I say, if you want to publish a book, you have to decide how passionate you are about getting that book out to market. And if you're really passionate, you will find a way. Now, Donna, are you also coaching people who are interested in writing or as a marketing guru? You know, are, is this something that you encourage uh, clients to consider? Absolutely, on both counts. Yes, I, I do and will coach. I will edit a book or a manuscript for someone, um, and I have done that. Um, I think it's important with the coaching to understand that if you want to have a coach to help you write a book, the coach can help you work through the concept, but most important about coaching is the fact that it holds you accountable. Mm -hmm. And it is hard to stay focused when you're pulled in so many directions just by day-to-day -day life and maybe by a full-time job to find the time to write the book. But particularly if you are an industry expert, but for instance, on the Space Coast, so many people have been downsized you know, by the space program particularly. Right. But they have tremendous information and tremendous knowledge and insight. Find somebody who can help you write the book and then use that as a way to your next job. You know, or, to, or if you've established your own entrepreneurial venture, use the book as the way to your next client. Perfect, because I think those are the key points that we really want people to pick up on is we want to encourage all viewers, if you really want to write a book, you can. Absolutely. I think anybody and everybody has a story to tell inside them. And it's a matter of getting over your own fear of whether or not you can do it or self-doubt. And, the and I best think self-doubt would be a big one for many. Yeah, Saying, oh, nobody wants to hear my story. Yeah, but the best way to get over that is to look at how many other people's stories you yourself are interested in, and they had those same doubts, but you want to hear that story. Mm -hmm. So somebody will want to hear your story, too. And it's really important to identify the audience for your story. Who is the kind of person that wants to read your book? Who is the kind of... Uh, business. What is the kind of business that could benefit from your book? What level of business person could benefit if it's a business book? Uh, what type of enthusiast cares about your experience? Are you passionate about sports? Are you a surfer? You know, there's so many different topics that you can write about. So summarize for us in about a minute and a half at max. What are some of the key steps that you would advise people to take who are really interested 
in writing a book? What are some of the thinking linear in terms okay. of to-dos? Linear, I would say, get clear on your concept, what it is that you hope to accomplish with the book and what content your book is going to be about, obviously. Mm -hmm. Maybe less obvious for people is thinking about how are you going to sell it when you get it done. So that means you have to, having a book is okay, but knowing where your book is going to go and getting it into the right hands is really the challenge for people. So develop your sales plan and think about who your audience is going to be. Who's the competition? Go to bookstores and mm -hmm. look at who's writing the same kind of book that you're writing now. What do those Great titles suggestion. look like? What do those jackets look like? Mm -hmm. Who's publishing those mm -hmm. titles? How much are they selling for? Who's reading them? Ask people in the bookstores. Ask the bookstore owner or the sales clerk there, you know, how are these titles moving so that you make sure that you're being relevant and then develop your sales plan. Is it going to be a book that you're going to try to go to a traditional publisher for? Are you going to publish it yourself? Are you going to, once you get it sold, look at other venues for distributing your book, catalogs, book shows, stores, boutiques, people that you know, Amazon, um, your, and your website. That's fantastic. Well, Donna, thank you again for being my guest. Loads of great information, as always. Again, thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having me, Deb. Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, on behalf of my guest and everyone here in the studio of your career, thank you for watching, and remember, be career happy. More information about this program is available online at millermediagroup.org.